Royal Crown Church of God welcomes you to your place of royalty where you are treated like a king and a queen, prince and princesses. You are before the King of Kings who is your chief host. Psalm 103 verse 7 He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The peacemaker is an ambassador, God's representative here on earth, someone with the kindness, with the likeness of God, with the sole aim of reaching the globe for Christ and reconciling them through fostering peace. God is interested in such people than those who choose to be babies for life. Where are you standing? Let us pray. My Father, my God, I thank you so much for another opportunity to recline at thy table, to hear or to receive from you the truth that sets men free. We thank you, Lord, for the previous invitations and impartations, the encounters. Lord, we do not take any of this for granted. We trust you, King of Glory, that today will be an exception. Glorify yourself in our lives. And as many as we hear your word, O Lord, from across the globe, let there be healing, let there be deliverance, let there be life. Lord Jesus, let the dead come to life again, to the glory of your name. Thank you because you are faithful God. Be thou exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise God. And with Jesus' joy in our heart this morning, I welcome you to the throne of grace, the banqueting hall of the Most High, where we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Praise God. Our topic is the Beatitudes, part two. And the subtopic is the children of God. And our text is Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 12, and I read, And seeing the multitude, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his uh, disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and test after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you. Firstly, for my sake, rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophet which were before you. Praise God. I pray for you this morning that as you take heed to the word, as you give your whole or the totality of your attention to the word this morning, that the Lord will speak to you expressly and you will understand his mind and get into his purpose for your life in the name of Jesus. You will not miss your purpose for existence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Beloved, last time we tried to x-ray the beauty truths singling out the peacemaker as a beatitude believed to be hidden in the list as it was not supposed to be there but intentionally brought in there for for people to know that beside receiving they also need to do some work we saw that the peacemaker is someone who actively work to bring peace harmony and reconciliation in relationship communities situations in, in in nations yes so he strives to resolve conflicts calm tensions and promote understanding in the bible we see that god is called the god of peace 
You see that in Romans 15, verse 33, and Philippians 4, verse 9. He desires peace and reconciliation among people and with himself. When we pursue peace and peacemaking, we align ourselves with God's heart and values. And I pray for us this morning that we will pursue peace. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing shall be added. The truth is that there are other things inclusive. But don't go after other things. Seek first the kingdom of God. That was why we read that unto Moses he showed his ways, but to the people he shows his acts. There's a difference between knowing God's ways and knowing God's acts. You can know God's acts and not know his ways, but there's no way you can know God's ways and not know God's acts. That is why it is very paramount to prioritize peacemaking because that is where it touches God. That is the heart of God. Praise God. So in other words, a peacemaker touches God's heart in a profound way. For this reason, God recruited us to the world as his ambassadors of peace. Where do you belong in this matter? That is my question. I want you to bother your head and pray to God. I want to be a peacemaker henceforth. I don't want to be a troublemaker. I don't want to lead a protest against anybody. But I want to find a way to resolve issues so that there will be peace in the land. When you are resolving matters, you are a child of God. And the truth is that you may not know it. It's either you are a child of God or you are a child of Satan. When you are not doing the will of God, you are not a child of God. When you take part in doing things that contradict the word of God, even if you come to church and preach and clap hands and receive the, and do the highest amen and do the highest offering, automatically you know where you belong to because the Bible says, by their fruits we shall know them. You don't need any explanation. So don't do something that your heart is contradicting or your mouth is contradicting. Let your eyes be what? Single. Praise God. So this morning we are going to be looking at the duties of the peacemaker. I haven't said much about who a peacemaker is. I haven't said much about other things like how do they operate, you know? Interpreting how that aspect came in. And it should be a tough for every one of us to ask, why did God put that place in that passage? Because every other thing talks about ourselves, but this one talks about God. His purpose and primary objective for our existence. Praise God. So here are the duties of a peacemaker. One is a mediator. Facilitating communication and understanding between parties in conflict. That is one of the things a peacemaker does. You see in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5, the Bible says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Jesus Christ. Now, you see also in, in, in Galatians 1 verse uh, 20, uh, uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse 27, praise God. Christ is walking, verse 20, yes, Christ is walking through us to broker peace, you understand, between the world and himself. It is our body, but Christ, but it is his spirit without which you are lifeless. What am I trying to express here? In, Gal in, in Colossians 1.27 and in Galatians uh, 2.20, you, you understand something there. In, in, Colossians, in Galatians 1.20, I mean 2.20, the Bible said that it is no longer I that lives, but Christ lives what? In us. In other words, it is my body, but it is the spirit of Christ. And that is why uh, Colossians 1.27 said what? That uh, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. Christ in me, the hope of glory. It is not me, it is Christ. It is Christ walking through me to reconcile men to himself. It is his spirit, but it is my body. But what makes the body alive is the spirit. So without the spirit, the body is lifeless. So he is using my body to carry out his own mission. So the reason why we are alive, we walk about and go about to eat is because we want Christ or Christ wants to use his body to win or to reconcile men to himself, to mediate, to bring the world back to himself. Without the body, Christ cannot be seen. Christ is only known in the body. 
or through the body. The spirit that was working the body is Christ himself. But he needs a body to walk. Because you don't see the spirit. You only need to see a man. And that man is me. But the spirit that is walking through me is Christ himself. That is why the Bible says that Christ in me is the hope of glory. So by this we can only function within his policies. So because the spirit controls the physical. Now the spirit who is Christ controlling the physical cannot lead you astray or to go against his policies. It must be within his policies. That is why you need to be in Christ to serve Christ. You cannot serve him in your own senses. When you see a man trying to manipulate God with his wisdom, I will tell you a man who has not yet known God. Christ is not yet living inside of him. If Christ is living inside of him, he will do as Christ wants him to do. So he is a mediator, but he mediates through us. When we say we are his ambassador, he does that through us. That is why Jesus said, I do nothing except the Father sends me. I cannot do anything on my own. Whatever I see my Father do, I do. Is also similar to us. We cannot do anything on our own. He leads us to do it. He helps us to do it as long as we have given ourselves for him to use. So he does it to us. He's living inside of us. He's not far away from us. So when he help us say, come and do this, come and do this, that is not prayer. It's an avenue for indulgence. Let us welcome the Holy Spirit. He has not been anywhere. It has been inside. You are the one who believes that is outside because you want to carry out some nefarious active activities. But when you begin to have that feeling and mindset that he dwells within you, you are conscious about the things you do because Christ is there to use you to talk to people, to use you to behave to people, or respond to people in your lifestyle. To use you to eat well and know how to eat. To use you in the areas of drinks, how do you respond? Do you gossip? Or how do you respond in office? Now you now come to office and say, this is office, we are not in the church, but we come to church to discuss. No, you are not in Christ yet. You have not, even though you go to church and preach, you are not, you are, you are not a Christian yet. Because a life that is, you know, absorbed in Christ is that Christian. And that life is life that Christ walks through. It's not a life that works in himself. He does not manipulate things on his own. It's Christ that works through him. Christ in me, the hope of glory. His intention is to reconcile people back to God through us, the flesh. The flesh. But the spirit that is working it is Christ himself. But the flesh through which Christ achieved that is me. So when I speak to people, I speak to represent Christ. When I behave to people, I behave to represent Christ. So you don't need a protest and yet you say you are a peacemaker. You don't go to fight and say yes, you are a peacemaker. It's automatic by your fruit and the things you do that you are not a Christian. We are talking about doing things the way God wants it. When we were in school, there's what we used to call WWJD. What will Jesus do? Now your actions are weighed. Ask yourself, what will Jesus do in these settings? Would Jesus have fought? Would Jesus have gone out to kill? Would Jesus have said, okay, take that and it doesn't belong to you, but take it still. If you know that these things Jesus cannot do them, don't do it. That is one of the ways to get yourself available for him. But when you begin to do the things you know that he will not do, you are making yourself unavailable for his purpose. And you know that there is no sitting on the fence. Is it that you are here or you are here? Is it that you are a Christian or you are a, uh, for, for the Satan? So even though you claim as oh, we are Christians, but you are not walking according to the pattern or the policies of Christ, you are not a Christian. You are only saying it with your mouth. And that is why God says, these people, they come to me with their lips, but their heart is far away from me. I service. I service. So Christ is a mediator. He wants to mediate. He wants to, you know, bring peace, broker peace between him and the people. And that he can't do in himself, but through us. Praise God. 
he can achieve that through us because we are his we are not our own this morning i want to give opportunity to people and say or uh, just meditate good over these things that you have heard and also give opportunity to people who have lived and with the assumption that they have been serving god I will talk to people every day who believe that waking up, sleeping, eating, and other things go to church and come back that they are serving God. It's not true. You cannot serve somebody who had not employed you. Because you love banking doesn't mean you can enter any bank and start counting their money. You are a thief. There are procedures to work in the banks. The same way there are procedures to work in the kingdom. He don't choose what to do. He chooses what you will do and he tells you how to do it. So you have lived in that assumption but this morning you want to get back to god i want everybody to begin to pray and ask god for his mercy this morning pray to god ask god please save my soul help me i want to be a peacemaker do you want to be a peacemaker an ambassador of peace unto god pray to god to help you this morning lord i want to be an ambassador of peace unto you this morning help me oh lord i don't want to live a wasted life there are people that even after 80 years they say we well, thank god for a life well spent it's not true it is a life wasted as long as that life does not contribute to the kingdom of god all you know is that you will go to bank and work and bring money and eat you are serving your belly and 99 percent of the world people they are serving their belly they are not serving god because all they believe is that they must go out make money come and eat and nothing more even if you tell them about christ it does not concern them and they believe they are they say we go to church going to church doesn't make you a christian it does not make you a christian so you want god to set you free this morning deliver you from that dangerous assumption that you have carried over the years ask god for mercy ask god for mercy ask god for deliverance deliver me from myself Deliver me from my self-assumption. The things I have assumed wrongly. Deliver me, King of glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now you want to take a decision this morning. and say, Lord, I am tired of running my own race. I want to join in this journey with you. I want you to help me. I quickly invite you to follow the prayers that is shown, as is shown in the screen. And as you do that, may God bless you. I pray your week is blessed. This week is a week of new entrance. You will break new ground. As you take on that prayer this morning, the Lord will begin to walk with you. And you will never miss your steps. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you.